difference. Uh, and we have to flush the hydrant. And by flushing the hydrant, what we do is we turn it on and we allow the water to run until the water runs clean. And that gets all impurities out of the hydrant itself and also keeps the uh, impurities out of the water system. Anything else? Yes, sir. Do you coordinate with the health department on, on that ordinance? We, we coordinate it with the utilities, yes, sir. But the health department doesn't check it? No, sir, no. Uh, well, I'm sure the health department checks with utilities. See, we're not in charge of the water, uh, how they check that. That would be something they'd work with utilities to do. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, I just uh, heard that a month ago. I, also, I'm a resident of the city, so. Yeah, that's all right. We, st we still love you. There are other taxes also, yes. Not but by property taxes. No. I find that interesting what you're saying. Uh, because property taxes are paid throughout the county. And you know, there's no way to differentiate, you know, did you pay that dollar or did somebody in unincorporated pay that dollar? So we can't we can't be funded from property taxes. I, I don't understand that. Well, all right, there's uh, the, Well, all the money goes into the general fund. I mean, it doesn't, there, there's no, that's just a state law. I mean, I, I can't explain the state laws, but the state law prohibits us from being funded by property tax. Thank you, Gretchen. <laughs> I knew you'd know. It's House Bill 487, but it does prohibit that. And so we have to be funded by, by means that is not collected in the, in, in the incorporated areas of the county. Now the other oh, only other, the the only other thing separation. yes there's no doubt about that just the source of the appropriations and how it works the only other thing you now the can the, the county could create a fire district tax that's collected only in the under, yeah but that would be uh, like an additional millage rate that's on the property tax. Uh, just, when you get into taxes and stuff like that yeah it, I'm not the tax guy so yeah what you do. <laughs> yes sir. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Ah, one more for Gretchen. Well, if you have a wood stove, yes. You still are burning, and so in, anytime you, you have open flame, there's carbon monoxide being created. Uh, now, should people have carbon monoxide detectors? Yes. Uh, regardless of whether you have gas or electric heat, uh, there are other sources of carbon monoxide. Natural gas or combustible heating sources are your primary source, but uh, I couldn't, I could not, I, if I'm not mistaken, Lord, don't new homes have to have carbon monoxide detectors now? Yeah, another one of those uh, house bills? Yes. Uh, new homes have to have a PA detector, even though they have only electrical heat or simple heat and air or heat pump, still have to have one. And, and so if you had a home that had electric, uh, where would be the best place to put that item? I mean, would you put it in your utility closet? No, uh, I, I, you, usually a hallway is the best place to put those. Just as your smoke detector, you try to put them in hallways. And you put it near the floor, is that correct? COs, up. They're up, up, just like a smoke detector. Usually they're, usually they're located, located next to each other. Okay. Anything else? If there's nothing else, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, no, no problem. Oh, no, I've lost my agenda. My Thank you very much. Um, this is civics really at its best when, when people come and tell us about stuff that we really 
take for granted as services, and um, I appreciate it. Now, Jim, do you have a financial report for us? Did you do some subtracting? Okay. I am. Um, come on. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to redo the figures. Uh, we began the month with a uh, balance of uh, $1,733.25, and we ended with a balance of $1,340.80. Can you repeat? Thank you. What are you going to do now? We're gonna, yeah, we're going to have the, the rescue department. Hmm? So we're going to do six months of that? Uh, yeah, yeah, i got several things here. Okay. So, uh, officers' reports. Uh, Dr. Marks will give us an elections report. Uh, we've already talked at earlier meetings about the elections coming up this year. This year, it's going to be in September. Uh, September is qualifying for the municipal elections that are going to be taking place in November. Uh, those are city council, school board, and uh, uh, in some of the municipalities, uh, mayoral elections. Uh, coming coming up. The other thing, so we're going to be spending uh, this year focusing on uh, party building, increasing increasing membership, uh, gearing gearing up for uh, elections uh, not only later this year but also uh, next year as well. Next year, big election uh, in Georgia is going to be for the Senate U.S. Senate election to replace Saxby Chambliss. Uh, the other thing that you should be focusing on at this point, if you are not signed up for Organizing for America. Please get online, sign up for that, make sure that you get the emails uh, from uh, the Obama campaign and the President's office, uh, particularly uh, the, the calls to either, either email or write or petition uh, or call uh, your uh, congressmen and senators uh, about issues on the on the national agenda. So if you're not signed up for that, please please go ahead and do that. Thank you. Wayne Roberson will bring us a membership report. Hello, I'm. Uh, Wynn Roberson, I had to think of my name, and uh, Vice Chair of Membership. But before I do that, I'd like to thank you all for coming. You know, we live out on the east side, 84, and uh, when my dad was living, he was deathly afraid of snakes. And he would, um, every other year, he'd like to burn things in uh, wood, in other words. And uh, one year, uh, he had us out there, and we were brother and I were griping, but the thing is, the fire jumped across our little break. And there is nothing better in the world than seeing you all come up. Nothing in the world better than to see you all come up. And, uh, and it, they were saying that uh, the trees were a fire, and they were in our trees. And they were saying that, uh, that we would have to pay for those trees. And I tell you what, that put an extra gump in our step. So, uh, I, I thank you all for the things you all do in, in, in that fire station out there. They stay busy. They stay busy. And another thing, there's no better feeling when a person is in trouble, because I know firsthand when a person is in trouble, you all are often the first responders, and you're like God showing up to them. But with that, um, membership, this is March, and we are to start our membership drive in March. And I'm obligated to do this. So we will, I'll get with Gretchen, and, and uh, I'm a dinosaur. I was telling uh, Mark Heath, I'm a dinosaur. Everything's on computer, and I function better with paper. But we will be contacting everyone, hopefully, to ask you, if you haven't already, to please contribute to the Democratic Party. $25 a year for most. $25. What's that? 50 cents a week, and we waste that in a lot of things. So I'm asking, if you haven't already, $25, if you will help 
us to help the community because your money will be spent wisely. And, and also, if you get a notice from us or someone calls, we ask that you will um, help out the Democratic Party. And also, bring someone with you. Because you know, the, the thing is, the, the chief uh, lecture is invaluable. I learned a lot here today. So please, uh, we will be contacting you if you, ha if you haven't contributed already. And uh, please expect you to call in. Thank you. March is membership month, and always remember to bring a friend. Next next month, we're going to have the airport. Jim Galloway is going to talk to us about the airport. So if you don't know a real lot about the airport, I don't really know a lot about the airport, so come and hear about the airport next month and bring a friend. Uh, this is the funnest part of our meeting after our speaker, when, it's when the members get to say something that they haven't already said. So do we have any members who would like to talk to us about um, a House bill, a Senate bill, a federal bill, a something that's on their mind? Jim Parker. And uh, I just want to say thanks for everybody to coming out today. And um, I've been coming to these meetings now for a number of years. <laughs> and, uh, and actually, I'm getting uh, more and more interested in things as time goes on, finding out exactly how things work and who, we are as, uh, who I am as a citizen and what my place in things is. I really appreciate you all coming out, too. And, and letting us know about the fire department. Uh, like I said, I lived in the city. I hope you forgive me, but a lot of, I know a lot of folks live in the county too. But uh, I really appreciate everything that Gretchen has been doing in bringing people like the chief and his, uh, what is it, lieutenant? Captain. Captain, excuse me, Captain. Uh, you know, with him, and, uh, and we really appreciate when folks like you come you know, that are directly responsible and are in charge of and run the, the, all the services that we need. And, it's in a, and, I, and I personally believe it's a function of government to provide that stuff. And y'all, you know, uh, we hire y'all to, to do the job, and we really appreciate it when you do a great job, <laughs> you know, which you do most of the time. And it's one of the things I've been learning about different people in our government, you know, the general consensus out there, conventional wisdom, seems to be government is the problem, and they're bad, and they're evil, and it's just, that's not the way we work as Americans as far as our American political religion goes, I think. When the, when, when the Declaration says governments are instituted among men, we do it. It's us, you know, doing what we need to do together <laughs> in, a, in a cooperative effort, because I've always found that cooperation usually gets you much farther than in competition. <laughs> you know, and, and even when they talk about competitive, it's all collective uh, things. You know, the fire department goes out there with a team, right? <laughs> you don't go out there individually. It'd be crazy because <laughs> it's just too big a task. And so we, had, we have big tasks. We need everybody working at it. Well. One of the things I've learned lately, you know, I really appreciate learning about how the government works and what our role is in relationship to it. And the more I come to these meetings, the more I learn. And, uh, and I really thank you all for turning out. And, and, and I just want to say, if you keep coming, you keep learning more and more. And it, it really starts getting interesting after a while. <laughs> and it can really empower each and every one of us and make us feel much more a part, much more of a, a, a community. And when we participate, and, and it's one thing I've learned, I think, as a citizen, it's not a spectator sport. It's a participatory, participatory sport. You know what I'm saying? It's, only when, it's when we participate in it that the richness really comes. 
and you can encourage all your friends about that maybe. And in regard, uh, I'm going to throw out a little plug because I heard something. Uh, you know, the city does the uh, sponsors this program called Government 101. I don't know if you all know about it, but you can go to them, and they uh, it's on Monday nights for a series of five weeks from 5.30 to 8.30, and you'll learn all about how the government functions, go to the different departments and find out. And they're starting this on April 1st. I hope it's not an April Fool's joke, but anyway, uh, and, and it goes through May 6th, and it's for the five weeks, and I've signed up for it because I want to learn more. And uh, when I went in last week, I was number eight, and I heard today they have eight, <laughs> and they need 15, and uh, the, um, uh, they told me that they have a lot of students from VSU signing up for this, <laughs> but... So if you're really interested in the government and finding out how it works, and I think it's going to be a great thing, a really interesting thing, and you did this, right? No? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. Uh, my bad. <laughs> uh, sign up for it and uh, encourage any friends that might do it, because uh, I'm looking forward to it and, and, and hope uh, it'll be put on. But they need 15 people at least, and so the, the cutoff day was supposed to be the 8th here of March, and, but yeah, we're just still a few days off, the end of the week here, and so I hope you all consider it and maybe give it a shot, okay? Anybody else have something important to tell us? John? Did anybody else go to the bird supper? Right. Well, um, I don't know why she went, but I know why I went to find out what is this bird supper? Uh, you, you've probably been in the past. No? No? Steered clear of that. Okay, well, the bird supper, you have? Okay, well, correct me if I get this wrong. The, the bird supper is this thing that uh, Lyons County, in cooperation with Aldosa and the other municipalities here, have been giving uh, for something like 48 years, some very long number, except they seem unsure how many, where in Atlanta they hold a supper where they serve quail. The quail this time were served by people from Valdosta, um, excuse me, Wiregrass Tech, and there was a heavy attendance from Wiregrass Tech, and um, the county manager, the county clerk, a uh, couple of uh, commissioners, the chair, Valdosta mayor, uh, city manager, public relations officer, a couple of city councilmen, um, <clears throat> about half of everybody elected and um, serving in Hay Hira. I didn't see anybody from Lake Park, oddly, nor Dasher, nor Remerton. But basically a lot. Excuse me? Really? I thought with the new mayor they were reformed now. Right, so anyway, and the whole point of this is that there are legislators there. The local delegation, most of them were there, but also legislators from elsewhere. And the idea is to be able to talk to them about legislation that is of interest here locally. Uh, one thing that everybody seemed agreed on is uh, HB 167, I believe that's the one, about uh, cell tower siting which according to the reading of the um, Georgia Municipal Association and the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia would permit cell phone companies to much more easily put up cell phone towers wherever they want at whatever height they want without local government oversight. Unfortunately, and this is where my point starts to come in, you're wondering if I have one, a lot of the legislators had already been convinced by the various uh, telecommunications companies that, oh, no, 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 that's not what this is about. What this is about is that some local governments will charge ridiculous sums like tens of thousands of dollars just to file a request to put up a cell tower and then sit on it for two years and do nothing. Now, if that actually happens, that's bad. But it seems to me that this bill has a lot of other things in it. So my point is that if people don't go talk to the legislators about things like this, who are they going to listen to? 
AT&T, Verizon, Comcast, Mediacom, the people who pay to send lobbyists there to do it. And, you know, and that's what the bird supper is, basically. It's lobbying by local people from around here. Okay, is it worthwhile? Um, I think so. And certainly one thing that the impression I got is it's much more so than even I had suspected that if we don't talk to the legislators, all they hear from is the paid lobbyists. And why shouldn't they believe them? There's, a, there's a, another bill, SB 51, a Senate bill that doesn't look like it's going to make the crossover date, which is the date that something has to be reported out of one house in order to be put on the agenda to pass in the other house. SB 51 would reform that fabulous 1973 Georgia territorial telecommunication, uh, excuse me, electric law that says you have your one and only electric utility according to where you're geographically sited. It would reform it in such a way that it would make it much easier to get financing for solar power, wind power, things of that nature. But unfortunately, the lobbyists have convinced uh, even the Georgia Municipal Association to oppose it because uh, apparently some municipalities that have their own power think that it says that they would have to pay a certain rate fixed by someone else for power that you would generate on your rooftop by solar panels, for example. I've read the bill several times. I don't see that it says that, but it's another example that if interested parties don't talk to the legislators and to organizations like the Georgia Municipal Association, they're very likely just to believe what the powers that be, the vested monopolies in this case, and I really do mean vested monopolies, that's what the 1973 law does, it grants monopolies. Um, so the bird supper's already happened, but Dexter Sharper is holding a town hall-like thing in a few weeks. It was on the- Saturday the 16th. Right. So him, for example, I would strongly suggest talking to him. He was there. He was very interested in hearing about all things like this. And he's coming here to talk to people. You may think, you know, the legislature is far away and what do I know? If you know anything about what you think, that will probably be something that he hasn't heard. And that is very useful. So that's, that's my point. Please talk to your legislators at the bird supper, when they show up here, call them up on the phone, send them email, whatever. Thank you. Yeah, I posted on the um, uh, Lowndes County Democratic Party Facebook page about Dexter's um, town hall. It's going to be on Saturday, the 16th in the afternoon. Um, he's posted it several places also. Uh, anybody else have something that they'd like to talk to us about? All right. Is there any old business that we didn't take care of on today? Is there any new business? Yes, I have new business. Um, the Azalea Festival is this weekend, and we will be doing a voter registration. So when you came in, there was a sheet to sign up there. We need to cover the different shifts of Saturday and Sunday so that we can register voters. Um, the big push for registering voters now is people who have moved. You know, do you live in the same place as you did when you voted last? Because it's important that people have their voter registration address up to date. Um, so you can come from 10 till 12, 12 till 2, 2 till 4, 4 till 6 on either of Saturday or Sunday. So before you go out, sign up on the sheet. Or if you want to help with setup on Friday, um, there's two spots for setup. Sign your name in there, and I'll let you know. Uh, we'll probably do it late in the afternoon. N next month, as I said, April 1st, Jim Galloway from the airport will talk to us about the airport services. How does that get paid for? What services are available? What are, what's the airport overlay? All, all stuff that is interesting. Um, also, on this Saturday is the Jefferson Jackson dinner in Atlanta. If you say, oh, I don't really feel like being at the Azalea Festival, I want to go hobnob with uh, Democrats, uh, they will be gathering in Atlanta for the Jefferson Jackson that's the annual fundraiser dinner. The speaker is Ted Strickland, former governor of Ohio. 
Um, they are awarding to Andrew Young the John Lewis Service Award. Um, and it's $200 uh, if you buy individual tickets or if you can get in on somebody's table, um, they might charge you less because if you buy the whole table, it costs less. Um, but Jones County is the only county right now that I think maybe has seats available. I checked with Brooks. Um, Houston doesn't have any. Um, so if you think you want to go, let me know and I'll try to hook you up with Jones County. Uh, I say this every time, but it's important. Uh, we have lots of elections that will happen in 2014. Now is the time for people to think about running for office in 2014. Um, everything from county commissioners to um, uh, congressmen to governor and uh, replacing uh, Saxby Chambliss. If you know somebody or of somebody that you think would be a really good candidate, talk to that person if they're your friend. Um, if they're just somebody that you know about and you, they may run for office before and you don't know them very well, talk to me or talk to Dr. Marks and we will get in touch with them and say, we think that you would be a great candidate. Please consider running. Um, you know, sometimes people think about it, but they don't take any action because they think, oh, nobody thinks about me. We just need to give them a little bit of a boost and then they go. Uh, is there any other business? Look, I have the gavel. We are adjourned. Thank you.